all of us have a story. But not all of us are living our story. We may be renting someone else's story. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I did that several times. And I didn't even find out until later in life. So let me explain my background. I grew up in Maryland outside of the Washington DC area and it was an amazing time to be alive. There were so many exciting things happening at that time in the 60s and what I found is that education was a little different, mainly from the way I grew up. See, I grew up from a, with a family that said everything should be around curiosity. You can ask any question. There are no wrong questions and there were no right answers. We used to be able to have wonderful discussions around topics in the paper, from the paper. So we take a word out and talk about it over dinner. And some of the discussions were so amazing that I actually learned how to read from the paper. It, to me, I needed to see how my life was a little different because at the time I thought curiosity, being creative was normal. I mean, we never had a coloring book in our house. We had paper and blank canvases and lots of different drawing tools and we could just draw whatever we wanted. And when it came to reading, my mother wanted me to read to my younger sister. I was the oldest of four girls, but at the time I was four and I didn't really understand reading, but she, my mom had said, here's a picture book, read it. And I would use my imagination and come up with a story around the pictures. And I thought that was reading. So when I started school, my first grade teacher was a little different than that. Basically, it was about control. And that's mainly what I think school was like then. But her thing is, there are either good students or bad students. And good students follow orders. And the first thing I did is ask the question, why do we have to do that? What do you mean by orders? <laughs> and after a while, this got her a little upset. And I ended up spending a lot of time in the principal's office. And also with reading. I didn't understand when they started reading with a first letter like C and they put it to AT to make it a cat. And there were I didn't understand how that fit around the story because I thought it was the stories that helped us read. I thought it was the discussions and we didn't have any discussions. So pretty soon I was labeled a troublemaker and I was labeled a poor reader. And this stayed with me. This stayed with me from, my K from kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade. And I said to myself, if I'm going to make it through school, I had to follow orders. I have to be compliant. So I became that shy little girl in the back of the room who never said anything and just did a good job. I made it. I got through school. Did most of my learning, because I told you I lived in outside of Washington, outside of school. Went to museums, went to art galleries, went and was part of history. There were so many things that were happening. And so I figured learning is a little different in school than it is outside of school. I said, I'm gonna to go to college. And then my father told us that he got a job in California and we were moving. So we ended up moving the day after my high school graduation. I have to say, that first day arriving and that summer was the loneliest time I think I've ever had. I didn't know anyone. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I didn't, I went, there was no college I was going to, but I did see that there was a junior college down the road and it looked intriguing. So I signed up and I went there. It's the best decision I ever made. I found out I didn't have a label. Nobody knew my history. I could ask a lot of questions and I could be me. It was like I was trying to find my why. I was trying to figure out who I am. So I started taking lots of classes. 
And the first class that really changed me was my English class, Mr. Davis. And he basically said, go ahead and write a poem. You love poetry? Write it. I did. He said, it was wonderful. Read it to the other students. I did, and they loved it. He also said, keep writing. It looks like something you really are passionate about. So I did. And, I, and he told me to enter contests. I did, and I won some. All I could see is this is something where someone really cared and listened and believed in me. The same thing happened in my chemistry class. Mr. Armstrong, who is this amazing, he was on sabbatical from the UK. I just thought he was cool. But he would do things different in chemistry. He wouldn't just explode things. He just wouldn't come up with and show you what you're supposed to do in an experiment. He would make you curious to want to know what's going to happen next if he did this or that. I couldn't wait to go to his class. And that's what it was like. I was in art. It was like that. I was in drama and I got to do things. There was so much I learned that I did really well. I got a 4.0. So I went to the counselor and we were talking about what I was going to do for my future. And she said, Barbara, you know you're doing really well. Have you looked at this new program that just started here? Dental hygiene. Why don't you check it out? So I did. There were 700 applicants for 18 spots. I applied and I got one spot. I became a hygienist. And it was an amazing career. I have to say it paid well. I worked, I was able to work part-time. I got married and was able to have two children and be able to work with, you know, part-time then. It, it, it was it was a wonderful life, but guess what? It wasn't my life. I started teaching dental hygiene and something happened. I started realizing that teaching might be my calling. And then when my children started school and I started working in the school, I started seeing some things where I could help. And so I went back and I got a, my credential and did the gifted and talented program. And then when computers came out, I think that's when something happened to me. The first computer I saw, I had to have it. I had to take it apart and put it back together again. My family's thinking, oh my gosh, what's wrong with mom? <laughs> but I just fell in love with computers. I fell in love with technology. I was doing claymation. I was doing all these fun things. And pretty soon, I wanted to do more. I was still teaching hygiene. I was starting to teach in the schools. And I, I loved it. But this one evening, we were having our house remodeled. And my dog walked out on the deck that was just being um, built. And I went out to get him. And I tripped. I tripped and I fell. And I fell. I was underneath the deck. And I, I didn't realize how hurt I was when I came to, because I was unconscious for I don't know how long. And when I came to, I couldn't stand up. I couldn't walk. So I figured out there's something wrong. So I started screaming. And pretty soon I had, I had the whole neighborhood out and the fire department called. And when they showed up, they couldn't get me out of this place. I was stuck. So my daughter ran inside and got a leaf of the table and brought it to them. And they said to me, wow, she is so clever. And I said, no, she's curious. I made sure that curiosity that I had learned when I was young, along with my husband, we had talked about this. We want to make sure we instill that curiosity in them. And they are amazing today. It's, it's wonderful. So things started happening to me. And I remember talking to my sister, Sandy, who said, you know, Barbara, you're moving from dental flossing to mental flossing. So she's right. I went to my family and I told them, I can't do this anymore. I'm not happy with hygiene anymore. And when I had broken my leg, I thought I was indispensable. I thought that I had to be there for my patients. I thought they, want, they would follow me. There were 300 of them that would follow me from 
dentist to dentist. And then when I sat there with my broken leg and then ended up breaking my, finding that my neck was broken and I had to have surgery there also, nobody showed up. They got one of my students and, and that student was a wonderful hygienist. They were really happy with her. It wasn't that I was the only one that could do this. I learned a lesson. I learned a lesson and I was able to become a teacher. And the other thing that happened to me is I started writing. When I started writing, I realized I could write about what I was learning, what I was teaching, and I became a professional developer. I wrote a column on professional development and I started connecting to educators through social media. And it was amazing the people that I met. When I found out that I'm not the only one with these stories, it, it changed me. So about three years ago, I started a podcast. And in that podcast, I got the stories. And the stories of these inspirational thought leaders excited me. But a few of them said they wanted to talk to me after. Or others called me up because they know I do coaching and support. Um, and a few of them said they were not happy. They were in a situation that wasn't working for them. And what was they were doing is what I was doing with hygiene. I was living someone else's story. Many of them told me, even though they may have had a problem with their administrator or they weren't in a place that was working very well for them, but they had to stay for their students. That reminded me of why I stayed in dental hygiene. And I realized none of us are indispensable. I was miserable behind my mask. I was crying and putting on a happy face. We just can't do that to ourselves. I know teachers do that same thing. I, what I did is I mentioned to some of these you know, wonderful people who were sad. Is that, do you really want to live like that? Think about if you're miserable, what's coming across to your students? So here are some things that you can think about. What if you talk to the person that you're having the problems with and try to work out a solution? If that doesn't work, maybe there's something outside of your teaching that, that you're passionate about that you can do. So you have some things to look forward to. And if that doesn't work also, think about it, that maybe you can find another place because, you know, just like I did, I found out is that there are students everywhere that can benefit from you because you're awesome. The other thing I tell everyone is if we tell our story, if we tell where we're vulnerable, where we've taken risks, where we've made mistakes, and how we learned from them, how we might have rented someone else's story and lived it, this can help our kids too. So I want to leave you with this. All of us have a story, and your story is so awesome. We need to hear it. Don't rent someone else's story. Live your story and tell it. I can't wait to hear it. Thank you.